trash service for the town of Weddington. Who's hauling it? Where does our trash go? What happens to recycling? Do we need government to fix this? And why should you care? Yeah, so those topics and more are what we're going to explore in this explainer video because we want our residents to be informed and educated so we can have intelligent, constructive dialogue on the topic. Wait, many of you just don't have a lot of time for all this trash talk. So here are the top 10 most important points in this video. You really should watch it all the way to the end though. Number 10, Weddington has 5,000 plus or minus residential addresses serviceable by waste haulers. Number nine, 78% of respondents to the Weddington Trash Survey are either extremely or somewhat interested in citywide trash service. Number eight, each of our 62 neighborhoods and 17 through streets are serviced by between two and five waste haulers. Seven haulers in total service the town. Number seven, waste haulers generally do not recycle. They simply haul the recycling to a material recovery facility or MRF for segregation. Number six, Union County has no landfill for municipal solid waste or household waste. Number five, Union County has no material recovery facility or MRF to segregate recycling. Number four, counties in North Carolina do not build nor maintain roads. Number three, limiting waste haulers to one could increase the time to necessary road maintenance by five to 10 years. Number two, the town has no plans to bring trash service in-house. And finally, number one, no big government play here. The town is interested in leveraging our 5,000 serviceable addresses to secure better service, lower rates, and more accountability. Now, back to our regularly scheduled programming already in progress. So we're gonna tell this trashy tale from six uniquely different perspectives. First, you the resident, usually a homeowner. Then the haulers, a set of hardworking companies whose chosen profession is to remove our trash in a safe, cost-effective, and profitable manner. Next, we're gonna look at a heap of trash, specifically municipal solid waste, or MSW. Then we're gonna look at recycling, like paper, cardboard, glass, aluminum cans, and plastic. Then we're gonna take a look at our roads because without our roads, well, we wouldn't have a whole lot to talk about here. And then we're gonna look at town government. Yeah, they're real people who are elected to serve, but they're also residents themselves. So did you know that our awesome town, nestled just south of the Mecklenburg County line here in Union County, there are between 10 and 11,000 of us. If you look at where we live, about 20% or so live directly on one of our through streets, including our two North Carolina highways. Providence Road Highway 16, and Weddington Road Highway 84. These include Hemby Road, Beulah Church Road, Antioch Church, Newtown, 12 Mile Creek, Potter Road, Ennis Road, Cox Road, Deal Road, Huntington Drive, Weddington Church Road, Matthews Weddington Road, Forest Lawn, and some small sections of Ray Road and Waxhaw Indian Trail Road. But the majority of us, about 80%, live in one of our 62 plus or minus neighborhoods. That's a lot of neighborhoods. Some neighborhoods are huge with 200 or more homes, while others have just a few homes. Some have been here for decades, and a few are still being built out. We've seen a lot of change in our 38 years. So in the spring of 2021, Weddington conducted a survey of our residents regarding their current trash service. We'll focus on three of those questions here. The first question, are you interested in town-wide trash service. 13% of respondents said they had little or no interest, while 9% said they're somewhat interested, but 78% said they are extremely or very interested. The next question is similar. Do you support a town-wide trash service if, big if, we can realize some improvements? 9% said no. 12% said they would like to know more, and I hope they're watching this video, and 79% said they would absolutely support the decision. The last question focused on resident satisfaction with their current trash service. 19% are not satisfied, 32% is somewhat satisfied, and 49% are either very satisfied or satisfied. So what are the key takeaways from the survey? Well, I think it's clear that town-wide trash service is at least a topic worth investigating. Residents seem interested if improvements can be made and finally, the trash haulers that are currently servicing our town 
are an acceptable starting point for improvement. So speaking of trash haulers, let's focus our attention on them. Did you know there are currently seven haulers servicing our town? Active Waste Solution, which includes Liberty, Greenway Carting, Henson Sanitation, Trash Control, Waste Connections, which includes Trinity, God Bless the USA, Covenant Waste, Hawk Sanitation, and American Waste System, Waste Pro, which includes Action Waste, and Waste Management, which includes All Points Waste. When we break this down by our through streets and our neighborhoods, we find that it's typical to have between two and three trash haulers providing service. Some neighborhoods have as many as five. When we consider trash and recycling service, that means as many as four to 10 trash trucks could be providing service each week on your street. So let's do a little math just so we can understand better. Based on the survey results, most homeowners pay between 60 and $90 a quarter for trash and recycling. For the sake of the study, we'll use the midpoint, $75. So $75 a quarter is $25 a month. Since there's 52 weeks in a year and 12 months in a year, that means there's 4.3 weeks in your typical or average month. If your home is serviced one time per week for trash and one time a week for recycling, then you're serviced about 8.6 times every month. So $25 per month spread over 8.6 services nets out to about $2.91. So for the sake of conversation, let's just call it $3 per service and hold that number for later. Now let's consider that 96 gallon trash can that we all drag to the end of our driveway. These bins hold about one half of a cubic yard of waste when they're full. A trash truck like this one, well, not exactly like this one, but similar, holds about 30 cubic yards of waste, but it has a compaction ratio of six to one, making its effective capacity about 180 cubic yards. So if we look at how many bins can be loaded into that trash truck, we divide 180 by half to yield 360 or 360 stops. Since not every bin is going to be full and since the trash hauler is going to fill these trucks as full as they can, let's go with 400 stops to fill up a truck. If we go one step further, studies have found that municipal solid waste or MSW weighs about 110 pounds per cubic yard or 55 pounds per bin. Therefore, 400 stops collecting 55 pounds per stop totals 22,000 pounds or 11 tons. So now we have two more numbers to use for our analysis. So now let's look at the daily or truckload revenues versus the associated direct costs. If we take our 400 stops and $3 per stop, then the truck generates about $1,200 in revenue per day or per truckload. On the cost side of the equation, let's start with a tip fee. A tip fee is a charge to dump your materials and is typically calculated by the ton. At the Union County Landfill, the tip fee is $42 a ton. Higher volume customers can negotiate down to maybe $38 a ton. So for our analysis, let's use $40 a ton. So that 11 ton load is going to cost the hauler $440 to tip it or to dump it. So now let's look at labor. Salary.com reports that the 50th percentile garbage truck driver makes a little more than $40,000 a year. So we'll use $20 an hour for our analysis. So there's another $160 of direct cost, assuming a full day's work to make these 400 stops, plus a round trip to the landfill and the depot. Trash trucks get very poor fuel mileage. Some estimates have them down at about five miles per gallon or even less. If we assume 150 miles in a day and $3 per gallon for diesel, then we have another $90 for fuel. So this brings our total to about $690 in direct costs. So why all this math? It's simply to illustrate that a hauler's operating margin on 400 residents served is in the neighborhood of $500 or about $1.25 per residence per service. This operating margin has to cover all of the indirect costs of running a business, like equipment costs, route planning software, and other IT, maintenance, insurance, finance, human resources, line management, and more. And by the way, the numbers are worse for recycling with higher tip fees and longer drives. So when we as a resident consider switching haulers, we barely move the needle for them coming or going. For a hauler to be profitable, they need a concentration of stops so they can fill that truck as quickly and safely as possible. Given the opportunity of 5,000 highly concentrated stops, we have a totally different story. This is precisely where the town comes in. 
Let's illustrate this point by looking at a fictional 10-stop route that spans five of our neighborhoods. If a hauler has to pick up 10 bins and they're spread across, let's say, five neighborhoods, that's going to be pretty tough. Each hauler passes another hauler stops as they travel their route. Now, if you call in with a single stop across town, that's great. Every business needs to grow one customer at a time. However, if you call with nine of your neighbors that can be serviced one right after the next, that's way more interesting to the hauler because the operational efficiency of those concentrated stops is much better. So imagine how competitive a hauler will be if someone offers them a chance at 5,000 tightly packed stops. They would fight hard to win it and they'd fight even harder to not lose it. Think about it. Now let's talk about our actual trash. Did you know that Union County has no landfill for municipal solid waste or MSW? We just call it trash. All of the trash from Weddington initially goes to one of two places, either through Monroe or then to the Union County landfill, but actually to this little building called a transfer station. This landfill is only for what's called C&D or construction and demolition. So it's only for wood, drywall, concrete, and other materials that are used in, well, construction and demolition. The second location is the Waste Connections Transfer Station on Rocky River Road, just behind the Monroe Airport. A transfer station is where the truck that runs through your neighborhood dumps its material only to have it reloaded onto other long-haul, more efficient trucks. So whether our trash is going to the Union County or Waste Connections Transfer Station, all of our trash gets trucked about 40 miles east down Highway 74 to the Anson County Landfill in Polkton. Shh. Don't tell them. Recycling might be the most emotional topic we cover. Did you know that recycled materials are traded like commodities? Commodity prices are set by the Institute of Scrap Recycling Industries, or ISRI, for these eight categories. Within each category is a host of subcategories. For example, old corrugated containers, OCC, it's cardboard, and mixed paper. Each have their own index, as do aluminum cans and each type of plastic and so on. It's very important to understand that waste haulers typically don't recycle. In many, maybe most cases, they don't even separate the material for recycling. Waste haulers like the seven that service our town simply haul the recycling to our materials recovery facility or MRF. MRFs are often run by separate companies who make it their business to separate the cardboard, paper, plastic, glass, metals, and then bale these materials so they can be sold to other companies that process the material into usable components. Up until 2018, a large percentage of the Western world's recyclable material was shipped to Southeast Asia. After decades of receiving highly contaminated shipments, China first, then most other countries, closed their doors to recycling, leaving the U.S., Europe, and Australia with huge stockpiles and very low capability to process these materials domestically. This oversupply caused prices to drop dramatically. For example, in 2017, a ton of mixed paper could be sold for $100. In December of 2020, it was at zero. Union County has no MRFs. We do have six recycling drop-off centers for residents only, not for waste haulers. In each case, the materials dropped off are aggregated and sold to various processors. For example, glass is trucked to strategic materials in Wilson, North Carolina. Cardboard is sold to Sunoco and shipped to their Charlotte facility. Plastics and aluminum is taken to the Charlotte Recycling Center, where it's added to other like materials and again sold to companies that physically recycle. The recycling that you drop in your bin could find its way to one of three places. The Mecklenburg County Recycling MRF, the Benfield MRF in Mooresville, North Carolina, or the ReCommunity MRF in Greensboro. So now let's focus on our roads. Did you know that in North Carolina, counties do not build nor maintain roads? That responsibility falls either to the municipality or the State Department of Transportation, the NCDOT. Did you know the money to build and maintain roads in North Carolina comes from the state gas tax, 100%. For every gallon of gas that's pumped in North Carolina, 36.35 cents goes to the state, an additional 18.4 cents goes to the federal government for a total of 54.75 cents on every gallon. A gas tax is collected at the state level. Then there's an allocation process to distribute those funds to the various divisions. Union Counties in Division 10, along with Mecklenburg, Cabarrus, Stanley, and Anson Counties. The North Carolina DOT in Division 10 
will weigh priorities for new roads, roundabouts, turn lanes, maintenance, and other projects. There's never enough money to go around. And in 2020, you could imagine gas taxes were low due to the pandemic. That means less money for the projects that we care about. The Union County Critical Intersection Design Document is a great place to see projects that are being planned, like the intersection of Potter Road and Forest Lawn. If you visit ncdot.maps.arcgis.com, you can find a map like this one that shows the streets that are scheduled for maintenance and when. What's even more interesting on this website is not the roads that are scheduled for maintenance, but that the vast, vast majority of roads in Weddington are not scheduled for any maintenance in the next four years. So we better have a plan to take care of our roads. So when we look at actual road construction, all roads are designed and engineered based on a number of factors, traffic volume, traffic type, speed, terrain, and more. The general rule of thumb is the 5-4-3 ratio. Subbase is slightly thicker than the base course, which is typically an aggregate material, than the surface course, which is generally asphalt. In general, neighborhood roads are not as thick as secondary roads and primary roads and highways. This is an extremely simplified description of road construction, with the main point being that neighborhood roads and secondary roads are not designed or built to withstand heavy vehicle loads. So let's look at the vehicles that actually travel our roads. A typical passenger car weighs between 2,000 and 4,000 pounds. An SUV, 3,500 to 7,500 pounds. A light duty truck, 4,000 to 8,000 pounds. A delivery vehicle, 12,000 to 16,000. A school bus, 24,000 to 34,000 pounds fully loaded. And a garbage truck, 32 to 56,000 pounds fully loaded and 16,000 to 33,000 pounds empty. The impact on our roads is, is not so much the weight of the vehicle, but the forces that are transferred to the road surface by starting, stopping, and turning. Higher weights transmit greater forces. The Minnesota Department of Transportation sponsored a study in 2014, which referenced several other studies from municipalities across the country. The conclusions vary to some degree, but the consensus is that by limiting trash pickup to one hauler, one or two trucks a week, the lifespan of road surfaces can be extended by as much as five to 10 years before required maintenance. Based on these pictures from Weddington Roads, even half of that two to five years of extended life would make a big difference. Our town government initiated the study because residents had expressed some concern. There's been no binding decisions made as of May 2021, but input and feedback from you, the Weddington residents, will be important as we move forward. Our assumptions, our hope, is that by pooling the collective buying power of 5,000 or more residents, we can secure better service for our standard waste removal, recycling that we can understand and trust, plus additional services that are currently not widely available, like a plan for yard waste removal, white goods like appliances, hazardous waste like oil-based paints, backdoor service for residents that truly need it. And we want to do it all with fewer trash trucks through our neighborhoods and at a lower cost for our residents. So before we finish this explainer video, let's cover a few myths. Myth number one, the town wants to bring trash service in-house and do it ourselves. No, Weddington has no industrial zone. We don't want one. We would require capital investment in trucks, maintenance facilities, and a considerable amount of staff. Offering a franchise to an existing hauler is a much more advisable approach. Myth number two, the town plans to raise taxes to pay for trash service. No, the tax increase would create uneven payments for the exact same service. It's more likely that an annual or quarterly service invoice will be created by either the town or the hall. Kind of same as you have now. Myth three, this is a ploy to increase the size and power of local government. Not really. Kind of like fire and police, all of the operations would be outsourced and the town takes an oversight role. Money may flow through the town, but residents currently have access to audited town financials and we simply don't have that kind of access to private or even public companies' books. So what are the next steps? Well, yeah, pretty easy. Let's have an informed and constructive conversation. Ah, I hope we can get service for broken down old signs.